So in my most recent uh, motorcycle lift build video, I introduced this drill press that I picked up. So this is a uh, Canadian blower and forge, Co Limited from Kitchen, Ontario, number 15 floor model drill press. This is the, you see, number 15 heavy duty drill, it's the floor model. And I'll put up some uh, pictures from a PDF from that era, or brochure, I guess. I'm gonna give you a quick look at this, and then we're gonna talk about exactly what it is we're gonna do with it. Uh, this belonged to a machinist who passed away a couple years ago. And uh, this actually sat in his son's house, and then his shed for like the last 20 or so unused. So you can see here, similar to the Buffalo Forge Company, the Canadian Forge Company was a subsidiary that was built in Kitchener, Ontario. I believe that was in the 1920s. Uh, this drill press is a, I believe mid to late 40s era drill press. And it is just solid. This thing weighs, with the motor, I believe these ring, uh, weigh in around 210, 215 pounds. And uh, I'll go ahead and put up a, a couple more pictures of the PDF or a couple screen grabs of the PDF just so you can see the information on this uh, on this fabulous machine. So the intent here is they're going to do a restoration. And by restoration, I mean full restoration. So we'll be completely disassembling. Uh, we'll be blasting anything that'll fit in the blasting cabinet. Then we can get stuff primed up and painted. And I'm not really 100% on the color scheme yet. I know a lot of these things are like a green or a dark gray. But I'm thinking Canadian might be nice to do all the main components red and then like white highlighting for things like the name and the model and such. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do with this drill press is I want to get the motor taken off, get it apart and get it cleaned up. So when I first purchased this, I went to the guy's place. He uh, went ahead and fired it up in the, uh, in the shed at his place, ran fine. I got it home, plugged it in and ran fine unplugged it. Then I plugged it in again a little later and turned it on and it started to slow down and it almost got a bit smoky. So I think this might, the motor might just be a bit gummed up just where it sat for so long with junk and shit in it. So we're gonna take the motor off, get it apart, see if we can get it cleaned up and working properly. So here we have ourselves a one third horsepower, 1725 RPM, I think it is. 1725 RPM Hoover AC motor. Let's see if I can get that cleaned up and uh, give you guys a quick look at that label so you can see it exactly. So here's the tag in the motor. You can see it's a uh, so let me give it another quick shot. They seem to clear off a bit when I hit it with the uh, brake cleaner. So there we go, AC motor B4558. SBE type motor, one third horsepower, 110 volts, 60 cycles, one phase, 1725 RPM, five amp motor. Then the serial number, we can see we have patented in Canada. October 19th, 1937, I think it looks, I think it says. I'll zoom in close and we'll have a quick look. Yeah, so far as I can tell, that says, patented in Canada, October 19th, 1937. 
there's a little nick gone off of there. A pure white dot. That's actually a mark on the uh, label itself. Oh, I'm getting it off. There you go. 1937 it is. So this is old. No, that's when the patent was filed. I'm sure this is probably from a few years later, potentially, you know, like maybe the 40s. Either way, you can now see all the details on that motor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the motor, take the case off, and have a look at all the bearing stuff and uh, see if we can't get things cleaned up. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is loosen off this set screw on this pulley on top of the motor. That way I can pop this pulley off once the pulley's off, we can go ahead and pop the case uh, bolts into these screws that go through the case, or these bolts that go through the case, and then we can get the top of the case off and get everything apart. So here we got our key, our pulley slips on and off nice and easy now, and the key is out, we've got our keyed shaft here. So I'm going to set this aside because this is one item that I'm going to very likely sandblast and clean up. Make sure we don't lose our key, so I'm going to drop that in one of my magnetic trays. So that's safe. And now we can go ahead and crack the motor case and have a look inside. So here's the motor apart. The uh, coil side is here in my hand. Bring that over to the bench as well. So we can kind of and stuff. So here's the coil side. For the most part, that looks good. You know, just a bit of rust and stuff in there. Nothing we can't take care of with a bit of a brake clean. But the issue here is the bearing in this end of the housing is uh, it's pretty much screwed. So it's pretty much seized up at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this out of the case and then I can go ahead and look at replacing this bearing. It looks like there's just one set screw here on this side. So we'll get that set screw out until we can get this uh, get this to come apart. So here's a little a spring that came out of this bearing race in here. So I'm just giving this a quick cleanup currently because it had, uh, 
This stuff is gross. There's a bit of rust on it, so I'm just giving it a quick clean with some steel wool to get that rust off. And then I'll just hit it with a coat of light oil while I'm storing it while I'm waiting to uh, put it back together. And then we'll look at picking up a bearing for this probably tomorrow when things are open. And then we can get into cleaning up things like our rotor. I'm going to call this a rotor. And uh, anything else we can clean up on the inside of this that we can get at without uh, breaking anything. So what I had just gave this shaft a quick clean up. I didn't really have to do much with the uh, where the bearing sits, but I did want to still clean up a bit of the rust and whatnot off of this shaft. So I can hit that with a bit of light oil as well before I put it back together. That should keep it good going forward. So this bearing is also feeling a tad crunchy, not as bad as the other one, but it's, I can still feel the crunch in it. So, I'm probably gonna have to try to get this apart. Even if I could just pop the case off, I might be able to open this up and lay it to one side without having to release all kinds of screws and stuff. Okay, so I just managed to remove a few screws, one, two, three, four, and get these plates and whatnot where all the connectors are off of the inside of this housing. So now I can spend some time cleaning this up and getting this bearing out as well. And once that one's out, then what I'll do is I'll go to my local bearing place, pick up the bearings that I need, get the shiny new bearings back in this housing, both sides. And then we can put our motor back together and this baby should purr. So I went ahead and I got the clip that was in the end of this out along with, oh, don't lose that. It's our set screw. Along with the, these two plastic washers. So you can see these washers sit up in here against this clip. The bearing then sits down against those. And with those out, I was able to knock the other smaller bearing out from this end. So you see, this is still like a nice snug fit on this side, no wobble. So now I'm gonna pick up a couple new bearings. We'll get these housings cleaned up and painted. Probably get this one cleaned up. I'll probably sandblast this on the outside as well and get that painted. We'll protect this placard here. Hopefully we can get it cleaned up a bit more. And if not, you know, it is what it is. Then we'll get the motor back together and we can go ahead and turn our attention to the actual components on the drill press itself. So here are the old bearings. I brought those to work with me today. So on the way home from work today, I picked up these, there's one. There's the other. So I've got a replacement bearing for this one, a replacement bearing for this one. So what I'm ready to do now is get those uh, motor cases sandblasted, primed, and painted, and then we can reassemble the motor. So let's do that.
Okay, so we've got our plates blasted. The uh, caps for the electrical side, I got a bit of goop I scraped off. You'll see in the fast forward there, you probably saw. It needs to be cleaned off and uh, dealt with. I'll do that now, actually, get that out of the way. And then we've also got our cases. So here's the main part of the case, and that's just, you know, blast enough to knock the rust and stuff off, and I covered up the, uh, the placard there. So we'll hit that, as well as our two ends with some self etching, and then we'll come back and hit it with some probably a dark gray, maybe a black. Not 100% sure yet. Maybe we'll do these dark gray and the middle section black. Either way, I'm gonna wait for the heat to come up in the garage a bit. I'll go ahead and I'll get some uh, self-etching primer on these parts. So there we have it. There's our mower housings and the like painted. So there's the feet, the two ends. And over here we've got the center part of the case. And there's our placard, not enough light on it to focus really. So I'm gonna give this stuff a day or so to dry. So I wanna make sure it's good and dry when I go to reassemble it. And then we'll be ready to put some shiny new bearings in. These are the shielded bearings required for electric motors. And then we'll be able to give the guts a quick clean up, get a new plug together, stick it all back together.
Okay, that's the motor back together. Missing one of the, these through bolts that holds everything together. But that's all right, we can pick one of those up after the fact. I'm gonna plug this in and see how it goes. What you're hearing is the vibration of the vise here. If I lift this up, let's see how it sounds. Nice. That's a that's an enormous improvement over what was on the go there. So, give her the old unplug. That's going to be it for the motor rebuild. Now that things are back together and working as they should. So next up, we're going to start looking into taking all these components off the post here. So we're going to unbolt everything, get it all taken apart. We'll blast each of these components individually when it's all apart, get everything primed and painted, polish our pole, and get it all back together. I'm really looking forward to actually getting into this. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Stay tuned for part two. We'll start working on this beast here.